everyone, welcome to my channel, welcome to another video. So last week I was not in the best shape, shall we say. And I firstly want to say thank you to everyone who sent me a lovely comment or a message. It's super nice to know that there are so many kind strangers out there. So thank you so much for that. Uh, but as you can see this week, my skin is doing a lot better. And I'd almost say it's completely back to normal, but not quite. I'll get into that in a little bit. <laughs> so if you didn't watch my last video, I would recommend watching that first. So this one makes a little bit more sense. If you can't be bothered to watch that video, I'll tell you I had a pretty big flare up. The first one I've had for almost a year, maybe even a little bit over a year. So they do happen pretty rarely these days. And even though it's now taken me less than a week to pretty much get over uh, this particular flare up, I don't want anyone out there watching who might be going through the same to compare yourselves necessarily to me because I have been doing this kind of natural eczema management thing for a few years now, which makes me feel very old. But my point is I have a pretty good, firstly, understanding of what my skin likes, what it doesn't like, what I have to do. It's very routine. And secondly, I have a very good kind of foundation, I would say. And so a comment that I do often get on my videos is how do I manage to stay so positive or how do I not let my skin affect me so much when it's at its very worst? And this I can also say is definitely a matter of, of time and practice and my mindset and my relationship with my skin has changed a lot, a lot over the years. And this definitely does help with healing quicker when it comes to flare-ups and just general natural eczema management. So today I wanna to give you five very practical tools and tips, things that you can employ today if you are either going through a flare-up, if you just have general eczema and you need a little bit of a mindset shift so you can get to that new relationship with your skin a little bit quicker than it took me to get there. So the first thing I do is that I now see flare-ups and eczema as work. It's not something that I love to do. It's also not something that I have a vehement hatred towards. It's just something that you have to do as a necessity in order to gain or achieve something better. And in this case, it is getting better skin and more than that, getting better overall health. It takes a little bit of time, it takes a little bit of patience, and yes, it does take a little bit of grit, but eventually you will reach that thing that you wanna achieve and that's kind of how I see flare ups. So the second mindset tool that I have is that I remind myself of that quote that some famous old man said, which is the only constant in life is change. And in this context, I mean that no matter how bad your eczema is or how bad your flare up is, eventually it will pass. And I can say that with the utmost confidence to every single person watching this. Yes, there are things that you can do to speed along that process to make it pass quicker in terms of looking after yourself, both your mental, your physical health, but eventually it will go down. Now, it does take a little bit of time. It can take a few days, it can take a few weeks, it can take a few months, but eventually the intensity of it will die down and you will feel better. And this is kind of connected to the first point, the whole idea of doing work in order to achieve something. That implies that there is a finite end point to this time. So the third thing that I do on a very practical day-to-day -day level when I'm going through the flare-up is that I make the time of going through a flare-up as pleasant as it can be, or as least unpleasant <laughs> as it can be is possibly a better way of phrasing it. When you're going through a flare-up, it is your skin telling you that perhaps there is something you need to look at or address in your life outside of your skin. And that could be something, could be some underlying stress, there could be something emotional going on, could be something else. But either way, sometimes it is just quite nice to have an excuse to chill for a few days. And I watch lots of good films, I make lots of yummy food, I hang out with people I want to hang out with, and I do not make any time for people I don't want to hang out with. And I really, really do just focus on resting, recovery, just kind of winding down for a few days. And that is actually a really, really nice thing to do. And I think it's also very, very good for not only your skin, but also for your, your mental health. So yeah, going through a flare-up is not a fun or pleasant experience on a physical level, but it can be kind of nice in other ways. So you can just take the time to look after yourself and enjoy those days off as much as you can. So the fourth thing that I do, and I think this one is possibly the most important one, and I kind of wish that somebody had helped me with this, especially when I was younger with very bad eczema, 
And that is to be very, very open about your eczema and open about your flare ups. It really, really does help when if somebody is asking you how you are or if you need to change or cancel some plans, don't lie about why, don't make it a secret. You can just say, I'm going through some eczema, I'm having a flare up at the moment. So one of the most difficult things about having a skin problem is that there is often a lot of shame and a lot of embarrassment wrapped up in having it when there really, really doesn't need to be. Your brain is very, very good at becoming hyper-focused on a problem, going over it and over and over it, snowballing it into a way bigger deal than it really is. When you say it out loud, when you say, I'm having a flare up, you automatically can hear how other people hear it. And that's when you realize it isn't as big a deal as your brain wants you to think it is. There is something very offloading and cathartic about being able to be open and saying it out loud. Now, you don't need to announce it. I mean, I obviously have a YouTube channel and an Instagram, so that has made me very comfortable with talking about my skin, but you can just be as open about it as you feel comfortable. So for example, if you have to go to work, maybe you wanna tell your manager, maybe you wanna tell one or two of your workmates, if you're just having you know, some friends over, maybe you just wanna to talk to them about it. But you'll see, it's also not something that you're gonna to wanna to dwell on. <laughs> you'll talk about it for like maybe five minutes max and then you'll move on to the next subject and you'll forget about it. It's just something that I think is super, super important and it takes a little bit of practice, but let me tell you, it will really, really, really help you. So my fifth thing is all about dealing with the mirror, the dreaded mirror, which is the source of most of our anxiety when it comes to dealing with bad skin and be dealing with a flare up. Now, I have two solutions to this. The first one is practical, easy, yeah, makes sense. The second one you're gonna hear and you're gonna be like, that is totally weird. But trust me, it really, really works. The mirror is horrible because it is such a big reminder of what you're going through physically. And sometimes you look in the mirror, you don't feel like you look like yourself and it's just, nah, not fun hanging out by the mirror when you're going through flare ups. Now, the first tip that I would have is that for God's sake, brush your hair and put some decent clothes on. I used to have this thing where if I was going through a flare up, I'd be like, well, I look terrible anyway, so what's the point of making any effort whatsoever? It may seem superficial, but just brushing your hair, brushing your teeth, putting on, you don't have to wear like a bloody ball gown, but just put on some normal clothes so you at least feel like a normal functioning human being. It really does make a difference because let me tell you, if you don't, if you sit around in dirty old pajamas and your hair in an absolute bird's nest, you're gonna feel worse. So the way that you choose to present yourself and show up for the day, even if you're just sitting around and watching films all day, it is definitely going to change your mindset and the way that you are approaching your activities at that day. I'm sure there's some kind of psychological theory that would back me up on this. If you are just going to let your skin just make you not care, just change your attitude for the whole day, it is not going to make you feel better at all. Let me tell you what, sometimes I make more of an effort on the days that I do have a flare up and on the days that I have bad skin than when I have good skin because I know that it is a really, really important aspect for helping me to get on with my day and helping me to not just sit around feeling sorry for myself all day. So that's the first thing, brush your hair, brush your teeth and put some good clothes on. Now, the second thing, is, like I said, it's gonna sound totally weird. And it's something that I heard actually when I listened to a podcast from this woman called Mel Robbins. I don't know who she was, but she's like this amazing American woman and she's like my new idol. But she told me this tip that when you stand in front of the mirror, look at yourself, are just consumed with all these negative thoughts, what do you do? You high five yourself. Yeah, one of these. High five. <laughs> <laughs> now the first day that you do it, high five yourself, you think it's totally weird and cringe and you're like, oh God, I'm never doing that again. Second day that you do it, you stand in front of the mirror, you high five yourself, you're kind of over the weirdness and the cringeness of it. And then the third day that you do it, you high five yourself and you will actually genuinely feel there is some kind of energetic rush that happens in your body and your brain. Now, why does this help? It actually genuinely has a psychological effect to it. Rather than going into self-talk, uh, which works for some people, but can take up a lot of kind of, take up a lot of your mental faculty, let's say. Whereas giving yourself a high five, it is a very simple action. But what do we associate high fives with? 
It is when you are encouraging somebody, when there's an exchange of energy, when you wanna give someone a boost, it's a good job, you're doing well. All of these things which are very, very positive associations with this particular action. You don't need to think about it, they come automatically. Now, the first time I heard about this trick, I was listening to a podcast and I was like, what? And I was like, nah, not doing that, not doing that. I honestly, I demand that you guys try it. It works. I don't know what it is, it just works. Try it today, try it tomorrow, and try it the next day, and then you tell me that it doesn't work. Ah, so thanks Mel Robbins for that final tip. If you liked this video, give it a big thumbs up. It really helps to support my channel. If you wanna see more videos like this, then hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you get notified when I put out new videos. And if you wanna see other videos, if you have any questions, comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And 